Now, for more on these medical innovations in Cuba, I spoke to Steve Wilkerson. He's the chairman of the International Institute for the Study of Cuba, based in the UK. And I asked him why the biotech industry there is thriving. Well, the Cuban biotechnology industry has uh, been booming for the last 10, 15 years. Um, it uh, developed uh, from the early 1980s when uh, the government under Fidel Castro decided to invest very heavily uh, in b the biotech sector and the pharmaceutical production sector. So Cuba, quite surprisingly, has a very advanced biopharma industry. Um, and the potential for this uh, industry is really quite enormous and very exciting. How in the heck can a country like Cuba, which needs desperately needs infrastructure, roads, rails, bridges, uh, homes, if you will, um, how can they be involved in such a high-tech industry? Because I would imagine it's extremely capital intensive. How are they funding this? Well, it's state, state funding. Uh, but it's a model, that, a business model, that has developed over time. Like I say, it began in the 1980s. Cuba has um, the raw material for this kind of industry in the sense that it has a very advanced educational system which produces graduates and postgraduates um, uh, you know, at a high rate. I mean, it's one of the most educated countries in the world. So it has the human capital to create such an industry. By the 1980s, this um, educational infrastructure, if you like, was well in place and was producing the kinds of uh, scientists that could start such, a, such a, an industry. And it was Fidel Castro's vision to create a, uh, an advanced scientific sector. If and when the embargo does get lifted, uh, how does that change this particular business model that you're talking about? Well, uh, what's going to happen is that if, if the embargo is lifted, say, on the sale of medical products to the United States market from Cuba, just that one aspect of it was lifted, it would immediately open a massive market which would uh, be a, a huge uh, boon to the Cuban industry. Uh, you would have um, US companies making joint venture deals with the Cuban biotech companies in order to manufacture and market the products for sale in the United States. Where are they in terms of the cure for cancer, uh, looking at treatments to cancer. I mean, we do have some treatments now, though uh, they have not quite yet perfected them. Uh, at what stage uh, is Cuba at in terms of looking at solutions for this? Well, the, the most successful area in oncology and cancer treatment that the Cubans have developed are what are called cancer vaccines. These are products that are uh, either given to uh, patients that have gone through chemotherapy in order to prevent them from recurring, or they are products that are used in chronic, um, sorry, rather terminal cases where patients' uh, lives are going to end, but the treatment with these vaccines prolongs their life or the quality of life that they have. We are still debating here whether or not we even agree on universal health care. Uh, I, I know Cuba has a, a fairly substantial uh, form of universal health care there. Are, is there something both sides can borrow or learn from each other in terms of uh, what they've tried to accomplish over the past decade? Well, sure. I mean, obviously, uh, in the United States, there are, are, there's enormous research uh, and development of uh, treatments and so forth, which the Cubans will benefit from enormously um, when, uh, when, when the, the embargo is, is fully lifted. Although, of course, some of the changes that Obama has already made is facilitating greater exchange between the scientific communities on both sides, which is going to be, make itself felt very quickly, I think. What needs to be done in the next year or two so that some of your ideas that you've, you've brought forth uh, come to fruition? Well, Congress is the big problem at the moment, of course. Uh, Obama can do so much um, using his executive authority, but Congress needs to act in order to remove more of the restrictions.
um, which are in place through legislation. Uh, and so it, uh, the battle really is on, on Capitol Hill uh, in Congress. Uh, th so the signs are very promising. And it would appear that uh, following her speech last week, Hillary Clinton is going to follow through and continue, if she wins office, Obama's uh, strategy of engagement.